there. And it's got to be, you know, you got to evaluate yourself, your staff, your program, everything that you're doing so you doesn't go through it again. And we've done that. I've, I've had bad years before, but last year there was a lot of reasons why. I think you got to address every reason why and make sure it doesn't happen again. And I think our staff's done a good job of that. Our players have done a phenomenal job of that so far. And as I said, there's 50 new guys on the roster that weren't part of that season. So it's kind of a reboot. It sounds kind of strange to be in your but it is my sixth year, but that's kind of what it was and is, and, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun in August sorting it out. What was one finding of what you can fix? Well, we, we certainly, you know, the, everybody can look at injuries, but, you know, it happens. It's a couple of positions so quickly that it kind of devastated us at a time we didn't think we could afford to. You know, that's why we have seven. Why, why do you have seven quarterbacks on the roster? People have to. I got to have three that can play. My odds are better with seven than they are with four. And uh, we won't go. I'm gonna make sure I have enough quarterbacks that we can win with. I'm gonna make sure we have enough running backs that we can win with. And, and then you still gotta hope you're a little bit, you know, a little bit lucky. And then defensively, you know, defensively, last year was the first year in the new system. Uh, but uh, this year, there's no excuse for that. This is the second year in the system. I think the staff feels more comfortable with with the players we got. Uh, but there are going to be a bunch of those 50 guys that wind up playing this year, uh, whether it's because we need depth or just because they're better than what we were playing with. But that's going to be a fun part of August. Uh, talk a little bit about how comfortable you are with the quarterback situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable from the standpoint of Brandon Dawkins is a talented guy that's, I think, still getting better. I think Brandon's learned how to be a quarterback from learning, leadership, and all that. But he's, he's a good football player. He can be a really good football player. But the best way to expedite his process is to have competition. And whether it comes for Khalil Tate, who had no business playing last year as a 17-year freshman, but we had to play him, that's all we had. Or it's from a couple of guys that we signed, or from a guy that's a you know, former uh, pro baseball player that's bringing some maturity room. I mean, there's that dynamic in that quarterback room has changed. And it's changed for the better. What's going to be the biggest surprise this year for Arizona? In a, good, in a good way. Well, it starts with hopefully winning better, playing better. It, I think the biggest difference is I think they'll see um, a little more athleticism defensively. Uh, we need to get more athletic defensively at all, on all three levels. And then uh, just better football. I think, you know, as a coach, you can sit back and say, well, you know, we had injuries or we had this happen, but, you know, it is what it is, and we better have a chip on the shore. It doesn't happen again. I don't. I never thought that the attitude was poor, uh, but it's competitive. Uh, losing needed to hurt a little bit more, and just judging on the way the guys have worked out the last six or seven months, and judging by what I think is going to happen in the next three or four weeks, the attitude will be right where we want it. How tough is the Pac-12? Oh, the Pac-12 is really good. I think it's better than it's ever been. I'm not. I've been in the league now uh, five, six years. I don't think it's going to go backwards. You know, the commitment to football has never been higher throughout the league than it's been right now, whether it's through TV revenue or what have you. Uh, but the league's in a great spot. And for us that have success at Arizona, we've got to be willing to spend some money and do a great job as coaches and recruiting, doing a great job as players. And, and one of the things we talked about, in order for us to win at Arizona, everybody associated with the program has got to love football. You can't just like it and be good. you got to love it and need it. And it starts within the program, the players and the staff. And obviously, the staff, we all love it, but I think we've got more players now that truly love football and love and embrace the things you got to do to be good at. And that includes all the stuff you got to do in the offseason. Is that harder to do because of the success of the basketball program? No, I think it's easier. I mean, people are talking about, well, you're at a basketball school, or at least we're known for something. But the truth is, we're pretty damn good in softball, too. We're pretty good in baseball. We're pretty good in the Olympic sports. And, you know, basketball has been phenomenal. I think that's, we can look around and say, listen, you can get it done. Now, it, it took a little bit, of, a little while, I guess, to build the basketball culture. And then Sean got there, he raised it to another level, Sean Miller. And so I think that's a great example of what, what we can do in football. You know, basketball is really, really important to a, a whole lot of people in Arizona. Football needs to be the same thing, the same way, and how we approach it from you know, administrative standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, certainly, and from a player standpoint. And uh, the good news is we have an example across campus in a lot of sports that we can point to 
to, to help us lead them. Pitch any of the early enrollees that caught your eye? Yeah, there were several. You know, I hate, you know, when I start name dropping, I forget guys, and so I hesitate to do that. But, like, for instance, one guy that enrolled early, Tony Fields at linebacker. You know, we thought, okay, that's a position we need a lot of help at. And uh, he graduated early in high school. You know, he's, he was one of the most athletic backers the first day on campus. And he's done a great job over the last six or seven months. So he's going to play as a true freshman. But there's a group of linebackers in this freshman class. There's six or seven of them that are all going to get reps starting next week. And uh, a lot of them will wind up playing for us. You mentioned trying to get guys that love football. How do you do that in recruiting? Well, you try to identify that. I think every coach wants that. But in every player you ask them, they'll tell you they love football. But what are they doing when they're not playing the games? Are they in, are they training year round? Are they? I hope they're playing. If they're not training, they're playing other sports, which is a good thing. Uh, but in football, in order to have success, you you know, to get good at the good at the game, you got to do a lot of things that are unpleasant, as far as lifting weights, running when it's hot and you're tired. You know, doing all the, the hard physical stuff in football, it's not fun. It's not lifetime stuff that you do. So we try to identify that in recruiting. So, okay, this guy, this you have this guy to pick from, this guy to pick from. Which of the two really loves football? Which ones are playing just because they like the attention? Which ones are playing because they truly love the game? And all coaches are looking for that, but we're probably trying to do a better job of trying to identify that in recruiting with our questions and how we're approaching who we're trying to bring in the program. Yeah, Donovan's an interesting guy. Donovan Tate, you know, we recruited him. I remembered him from dating myself here way about eight or nine years ago when I was in Michigan. And he went to the time, he was the third pick of the draft, you know, took the signing bonus and played baseball. Found out through a friend that hey, he's not playing baseball anymore. He's got four years of college eligibility. Baseball is paying his way, and so he's a he's a he'd be a freebie. Um, but you know, can he? Can he does he really want to do this? And then after talking to the guy, he paid for his own visit to come visit campus, and he's worked his tail off. And he's bringing a you know I don't know you know what kind of uh, player he's going to be right now, but I know this: the maturity in that quarterback room has changed already because here's a 26 27 year old grown man married and three kids and then you have my son who was 19 going on 39 uh, in that room too so the maturity level in that quarterback room has changed already and that's going to help us so you won the territorial cup in the second half with not much passing we didn't throw a pass didn't we didn't have a third pass. we didn't have a third down I and this think, is so. now lore in Arizona football. So um, we've got a taste of Khalil Tate throwing a big bomb at the spring game. So are you strengthening your offensive line? Is that something we want to see more this year? Well, the, we have to be able to run the football well. And we've always prided ourselves in doing that. And there were times, you know, whether it was because of the, the depth of tailback or injuries up front, that, you know, last year where we didn't run the football when we had to. And that, that cost us some games. but. Our quarterbacks all have the ability to run. I think again, you know, we're we're healthier now at tailback, so we got a couple of guys we feel good about there. Uh, but we've we've got to have we actually got to get better at throwing the ball, and that's one thing we've challenged Brandon and the quarterbacks. We challenge our receiving receiving crew that we've got to be able to get better at throwing the football, and uh, not just when we have to throw it, but when uh, they don't expect it. And I think we'll be better at it outside the scope a little bit, but are you surprised to see a Lincoln Riley or a Justin Wilcox hot coordinators get jobs? And what are the challenges for guys who haven't been head coaches at the smaller school? Well, I think you're ready or you're ready, whether you're a coordinator or you're a head coach at a, at a smaller school. I think if, if you're ready to be a head coach, you're ready to be a head coach. And, you know, Lincoln, I, I don't know him that well, but, uh, you know, everybody I talk to says he's extremely bright. He's worked his tail off. and. And Bob's a close friend of mine that came to a surprise to all of us. But, you know, there are a lot of smart people at Oklahoma running that program, and they know when a guy's ready to coach and be a, a head coach. And I think I got started early. I was When I was a head coach at 24 at Salem College, I wasn't ready. I was just faking it. But, um, that's probably why I was the youngest head coach at 24, the youngest fired at 25. That's when they dropped football. But uh, when I got the – the, the next head coaching opportunity at 26 at Glenville, and then when I was a head coach in West Virginia at whatever I was, 32 or 33, I was more prepared. But I think 
sometimes when you get a head coach, you think you, some people think that's the that's the end. You got to you you quit learning. I'm you know, I've been doing this quite. I I would like to think I've learned a lot more each year I've coached, and I'm, I'm a smarter, hopefully a smarter coach, and try to be better now than I was two, three, four, ten, twenty years ago. I think that's the challenge for head coaches when you get there. Okay, this is not the end all to be all. You got to keep learning and growing, and that's what I've tried to do. What have you learned? If you want to find me, yeah, I'm in the front row. With my two tickets, on me, I'm in the front row. It's the best place to be, I'm in the front row. Best place to be, yeah. If you want to find me, yo, I'm in the front row. With my two tickets, on me, I'm in the front row. It's the best place to be, I'm in the front row.